If you own a 3D printer, then chances are you have a power supply similar to this to power your 3D printer. This is a 360 watt, uh, 12 volt, 30 amp power supply. It does its job perfectly. There's plenty of juice coming out of this to power the printer. However, the fan that this power supply comes with, uh, with this particular one that I have here, is always on. The actual fan is regulated by the amount of current that you're drawing uh, out of the power supply. So the fan speed varies up and down based on what you're doing with it. However, because it's always on, it can be quite uh, distracting, especially if it's in a room that you're working in. And these power supplies, you know, they're fairly efficient and they don't get very hot. And this particular power supply, this fan is always on. The other power supply I have that I bought with my original 3D printer, the Replicio back in the day, that's a temperature controlled fan. So it's off until a certain temperature is reached within the power supply, then it kicks in, cools down the power supply, then turns off. It's a much better way of being able to work in a room with a power supply rather than having the fan on the entire time. This is the power supply I've purchased here. This is the 360 watt power supply, provides up to 30 amps at 12 volts. This one has the fan as you can see, but unfortunately the fan is always on. So we could potentially choose a different power supply which doesn't have a fan, such as this one here. This one here can only provide 20 amps. It's a 240 watt power supply, but it is a little bit cheaper and there's no fan, but I'm not sure if 20 amps is going to be enough for the Hypercube. When choosing a power supply for your 3D printer, it's best to work out how much current you need before actually purchasing the power supply. So the power supply I have here is a standard 30 amp 12 volt power supply. It can provide up to 360 watts of power. But let's stick with that 30 amp value at this stage because we can calculate through all the components how much power this printer is using. The heat bed I have here is a Mark II B heat bed. It has a very low resistance on the 12 volt terminals. It's as low as 1.1 ohms. So we know we're feeding 12 volts into this and at 1.1 ohms, this will be extracting approximately 10.9 to 11 amps of current. Next up we have the stepper motors. There are one, two, three, four stepper motors on this printer and they are driven by the A4988 step driver sticks. Now I have the potentiometers set halfway, so they're providing about one amp per coil on each of these stepper drivers, so that's up to four amps of use with all four motors. So with the bed plus the motors, we're up to about 15 amps of current. Then we have the actual uh, heater resistor for the hot end. So this is a 40 watt resistor, and running at 12 volts, that's consuming about 3.3 amps. So that means we're up to about 18, 18 and a half amps from just those items. And then lastly, we have the RAMPS board itself, uh, and also the power supply. Uh, the power supply is not magic. It's gonna consume some power with its in inefficiencies. So we're looking at pretty close to 20 amps for the entire printer while it's running. Either way, I've already got a couple of these power supplies and the one that I had originally with the Replicio kit is temperature controlled. It turns on and off based on uh, how much load is being drawn out of this power supply. And that's the functionality that, I, that I'm after here. That was perfectly fine um, with working in the room while having the fan turn on only briefly to keep the power supply temperatures in check. So after searching online, figuring out how I could uh, potentially make this fan temperature controlled, I stumbled across a couple of websites. This one here called I'm a Genius uh, goes through dissecting these power supplies that, that we own and he's even reverse engineered the actual circuit board. So here is a photo of the power supply inside and as you can see this is the fan connection down here and we have these two black wires going across into this toroid with some white glue or silicon holding it in place. He's also taken a photo of the underside of the power supply, so the fan connections are around here somewhere. And lastly, he's done a lot of work here, he's actually drawn up a schematic for this power supply as well. And if we zoom into this section here, this is the fan supply plus thermal switch, we can see that 
here there is this thermal switch which is actually turning on and off this fan. Now I have a sneaking suspicion the power supply that I have does not have this thermal switch inside. And the other website I've found regarding these power supplies is from Electrobob. He has a blog uh, regarding how to quieten your 3D printer. And one of the items he talks about is the actual power supply, the same one that I have here. So you can see the fan here. And you can see these two black wires going into this toroid over here. And if we go down a little bit further, he's gone one step and he's actually taken out this particular device from the toroid. This is actually a mechanical thermostat. It's designed to turn on at 45 degrees and turn off at 33 degrees. So this is a normally open switch. When the temperature reaches 45, it closes, which then completes the circuit and makes the fan spin. And when the temperature cools down to 33 degrees Celsius, it goes back to normally open, removing power from the fan. So basically, this is all I want. I want to return this functionality to my power supply. So it seems like all I need to do is buy one of those mechanical thermostat switches at the right rated temperatures and install it into this power supply seems pretty simple. And yep, you guessed it, Banggood also sell this particular thermostat, the KSD9700. They have a whole different range of temperatures here to choose from and luckily the 45 degree one is in stock. So this is a normally open switch so the fan won't be on under normal or low load conditions and will only close or turn the fan on uh, when it reaches that 45 degree mark. And the last thing I need is something to hold the thermostat within that inductor of the power supply. And unfortunately Banggood don't sell this, but it's dirt cheap on eBay. This is just some thermal conductive adhesive, which is silicon based. It is not electrically conductive, it is thermally conductive. So that's going to aid in measuring the temperature of that particular device and ensuring that that thermostat switch uh, deploys when the temperature reaches the set uh, threshold. So I've removed this power supply from the Hypercube, we'll take a look inside and have a look at where the fan connects and see what's different compared to the photos that we've seen online. Okay, that's all the screws. We might need to cut through this sticker, which might void our warranty. <laughs> warranty. So taking a look at where the fan plugs into the circuit board, you can see where the wires of that thermal switch should be, there is just a jumper. They're just shorting across that, emulating a normally closed connection. So that's why the fan is always on. They've saved a couple of bucks by removing that part and being able to sell it to you cheaper. Unfortunately, the fan is always on. So here's some of that uh, silicon thermal adhesive. And also here is that thermal switch, so the KSD9700 with a 45 degree on and a 33 degree off. So before making this video, I've tested this out. So here is that first power supply that I made the uh, addition to. And here's the one I just showed you open. So this one here I haven't modded yet, but I do have the, th the thermal switch and the uh, silicon there ready to go. But I've already done this. I've done this to this power supply here. So to save a bit of time, I'll open this one up and show you what I've done. So the unmodified power supply is on the right hand side and this is the one that I completed earlier. Let me zoom in a bit here. So you can see all I've done is I've removed that jumper that was on that circuit board and it just looks like a staple. And here it is here. That's what I removed out of there. And I simply soldered in uh, the wires of this mechanical thermostat and using that silicon adhesive put a whole heap in there that's now locked in place 
and it's using, I guess, the, the mass of this particular component to, to regulate the temperature. And this part is also part of the uh, external stage, so the more current that you're extracting, the warmer this part will get. So this is a, a good location for that thermal switch. Okay, I'll be plugging in this thermally controlled fan to power supply into the RAMS board and I'm only going to be powering up the heated bed here, seeing as the heated bed takes about 11 amps, so it's going to be a good load for this power supply to warm up a bit, turn on that fan and hopefully turn off and regulate the fan control. Okay, I'll start by plugging the power supply into the mains. You can see the light is on, but the fan is not spinning. Perfectly silent. Good start. To keep the noise to a minimum, I've powered down the hot end fan, seeing as that is also a source of noise. So there is no noise coming out of this 3D printer at the moment, even though it's turned on. I'll only be testing with the heat bed anyway, so this doesn't need to be plugged in. So now for our test, I'll set the bed temperature to about 65 degrees Celsius. 64. Close enough. Okay. You can see the temperature is rising now at 27 degrees Celsius and the fan hasn't turned on on the power supply yet. Yep. Power supply is room temperature. So we're up to 41 degrees on the bed, 42 degrees. It's been about a minute since I've powered up the bed. The fan still hasn't turned on on the power supply. Still no heat at all coming from this power supply. Small amount of just above room temperature here, but still fairly cold. 64 degrees, and the fan hasn't kicked in, which is the same behavior as my other power supply. When printing with a, when printing PLA basically, the fan rarely turns on because the bed's only set to 60 odd degrees, and that's more than enough for this power supply to handle without uh, needing any extra cooling. Okay, let's jack this up a bit more. Let's increase the load on the power supply by increasing the temperature of the bed to about 80 degrees Celsius. Still eerily silent. This is where a fluor meter will show me the temperature of the power supply. I don't have a fluor meter. That would be great in this particular use case. The case of the power supply is still room temperature. It's only a little warm down at this section. Control. Geez, I can really feel the heat coming off this uh, heated bed now. Bed. Let's go 96 degrees Celsius. Aha! There it is. I heard the click of the thermal switch and the fan is now on. And the temperature of the air coming out, it's room temperature, it's not even hot. There it is, turned off. So that was on for about two minutes. So that means the internal temperature of that toroid is back to about 33 degrees Celsius. And after all this time of, of being on and powering that heat bed, just having that fan on for that couple of minutes, this entire uh, case of this power supply is back to room temperature. A much quieter 3D printer having a thermally controlled switch. When printing in PLA, I don't think this fan will turn on at all because the load is just so low on this power supply. 
And of course, this was one method to quieten down the power supply. I've seen online others have used a different fan, they've mounted it externally, they've used a quieter fan. So there's all different ways to quieten down the power supply. I'm happy with having that thermal switch in here, turning on briefly and then turning off for a longer period of time. That I'm happy with. It doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it's disappointing. Leaving a six hour print going overnight and then waking up to this jumbled mess on the build platform. You can kind of make out this part here is the uh, left or right motor mount for the Hypercube and this particular part here is the uh, XY joiner. Somehow I don't think they're going to work.